Welcome to Altium's Conquer Pro Overview. I'm Danny Goddard, a field application engineer out of our La Jolla, California headquarters. Let's go ahead and jump in to today's agenda. So first we'll talk about what Conquer Pro is and examine the needs of components. At a high level, Conquer Pro, in conjunction with Altium Designer, provides a standardized approach to the organization of libraries, a convenient component creation interface, simultaneous work between Altium Designer and mechanical CAD, such as SolidWorks, Creo, or Inventor, easy and quick search for components, component traceability with where used, up-to-date information about components, including availability, cost, alternative components, and their current status. So what is a component anyway? Depending on who you ask, the word component could mean a number of different things. If we talk to an electrical engineer, they're primarily concerned about the symbol on the schematic, which could be represented by a data sheet or a spice model. If you talk to a layout engineer, they're mostly concerned about the physical aspects of the component, so they're primarily focused on footprints or 3D models. However, if you talk to somebody in purchasing, they're going to be concerned about the cost and is it in stock. So therefore, everybody has different parametric requirements that need to go into the component. One major factor of library management issues is the use of file-based libraries. In fact, if we took a look at the history of file-based libraries in Altium Designer, we'll see that the schematic library and the PCB library are the basic building blocks of all libraries in Altium Designer. However, those schematic libraries and PCB libraries could be compiled into an integrated library, or you could utilize a database library or SVN database library. Now with the more sophisticated types of libraries, you do have a little bit more control over the parametrics and the location in which you store the files. However, you still have a lot of the same problems that you'll have with file-based libraries. One of the big problems is that your file information could be scattered across many different parts of your network, so it makes it difficult to find all the files you need. Parameters could be mismatched, and sometimes it's hard to find components that you've already made, so a lot of duplication of effort goes into the process. For example, take these two components in the corner. One engineer could have made the first component, then filed that away somewhere, and then another engineer could have come along and made a footprint that has the same exact name, however the copper is completely different. It's also difficult to associate these components with a real manufacturer's part number. Copying and pasting a symbol, then just changing the value may lead to having an incorrect manufacturer part number in the bill of materials. Also, the component you have in the design is not easy to validate as being the correct component for that particular application. So what do we need to effectively manage components? Well, it would be excellent if we could create components based off of a template and then assign each component a particular type or category. We also want to be able to create a standardized set of parametrics for each component, then attach manufacturer's part numbers to the components. We also want to have life cycle and revision history for the component itself as well as the symbols and footprints. So how does Conquer Pro help us achieve complete component management? First, we have great search capability. You search from within the components panel of Altium Designer. You're able to search by part number, partial part number, any parametrics that are associated with any of the components, as well as by name or description. We have an easy to use convenient component editor, which allows you to control all aspects of the component from the symbol to the footprints, the parametrics, and the supply chain data, allowing you to see the entire component's composition. Then from within the active bomb feature of Altium Designer, you have the ability to validate the components at the project level. Another aspect of Conquer Pro is ECAD MCAD collaboration. This allows you to transfer mechanical CAD data from the ECAD domain to the MCAD domain, regardless of whether you have SOLIDWORKS, PTC Creo, or Autodesk Inventor. We have additional videos separate from this one 
which show each of those collaboration processes in action. Now let's go into Altium Designer and see how Conquer Pro can make your design process easier. Here in Altium Designer, I have a design that is stored in Conquer Pro. One of the first things we're going to do in this design is run a validation. When we run a validation, a set of error rules are checked, and it looks for things like out-of-date components. So for example, L1 is out of date, and if we go look for L1, we can see this component in the design, and when we click on it to reveal its properties, we'll note that in the properties panel, it shows us that it is out of date. Updating this component by itself is as easy as clicking the button here. And this brings down the latest and greatest from Conquer Pro. And in fact, you can see an updated visible parameter here on the schematic. However, at this time, I'm going to hit undo. I want to show you that update process in the BOM later on in the demo. When using Conquer Pro, one of the main places that you're going to get your components is in the components panel. So when we use the components panel, we have a drop-down list of all the different component categories that are set for Conquer Pro. However, we have some other search capabilities that we're going to show here. When we look at this in expanded mode, the drop-down menu is now located on the left and is expanded as a tree to reveal the different component categories. So in this scenario, let's say that we're going to search for a 3.3 volt regulator. We can go into the integrated circuits category and then into this power supply category and look at various power supply ICs. So as we're looking for the regulator, we might want to use the filters pane to help narrow the search down a little bit further. In the filters pane, we're presented with various checkboxes and buttons related to the parameters that are in the components. At the top, we could type in voltage. And this will give us our various voltage categories. For output voltage, if this is something that we search for quite often, we might want to star this so that it stays close to the top of the pane. However, at this point, we're going to go ahead and click 3.3 volts because that's the voltage we're looking for. And that'll narrow down our selection quite a bit. Let's go ahead and also type in current. This will allow us to narrow down to a component in the 1 amp category. We select 1 amp. This gets us to two components. One of the things we can do here is select both of the components using control click, and we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. You'll notice that as we compare the components side-by-side, -side, that some of the parametric data is in white and some of it is in red. The items that are in white are actually like items, and they're essentially the same between both components. And then the items in red are different, thus allowing us to focus in on the differences between those components. This red-white theme also carries on to the naming of the symbols, as well as the naming of any models or footprints that are attached. Once we've finally settled on a component, to place it in the design is as simple as dragging and dropping, or right-clicking and hit Place. Now I'll show a slightly different search method using the search bar at the top. Here, we can type in partial part numbers to arrive at some results, or we can type in parametric information or values. So for example, if I'm looking for an 0805 6.3 volt 22 microfarad capacitor, I can type those values into the top and allow it to search for that. Notice that in the search results, it didn't find anything. So we can click on Create Component which will bring us directly into a component editor, or we can go to Manufacturer Part Search. If we click Manufacturer Part Search, it takes the same search criteria that we used in the Components panel and uses this as the search criteria for the Manufacturer Part Search. The results of the part search show below, and each of the results has clickable areas. So for example, you can click the part number to go to either the manufacturer's website or to Octopart. You can also click in the SPN area for supplier part numbers and actually see the parts as they're represented by the different suppliers. The vertical divider here is color-coded. If it's green, that reflects that the manufacturer's life cycle status is in volume production. However, if it's orange, there is some risk related, such as if there's low stock. If it's red, that means it's discontinued, not recommended for new design, or obsolete. Next to the vertical divider bar 
is an IC chip icon. That icon means that Altium's library team has already created the footprint and symbol for this particular component, and it can easily be acquired and added into your Conquer Pro library. To do that, all we need to do is right click and hit acquire. The first thing that happens when we acquire is that it prompts us to choose a category. When we select the capacitor type here, this is automatically tied into a component template, which ensures that certain information is used when creating the capacitor, such as specific parameter types, naming convention, as well as a predefined symbol. Let's click OK and look at some of the options it gives us. As we bring this into the component editor, we're given the choice to use all of the data from the acquired component. This would involve downloading the symbol as well as the footprints in there. So this is great for a component that you haven't created already. However, in our case for our capacitor, we may already have a symbol defined as well as a footprint that we can use from our existing Concord Pro data. So it's possible if we already have a symbol and a footprint that we've used on other capacitors that are already in Concord Pro, then we don't have to use the symbol provided by Altium. We could just use the parametric information or the supply chain and part number information only. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use all data and let that bring this into the component editor. In the component editor interface, we're presented with all the aspects of component creation. On the left hand side, we're presented with a parameter list as well as the name and description information. The bottom left has the supply chain information, and then the right hand side has the symbol and footprint information. Now, each one of these footprints or symbols could be edited, removed, or replaced from here. You could set the default. If you needed to add a footprint that's already existing in Conquer Pro or create a new footprint, you could do so from this menu. If we were to give the component a generic name, let's say for example 22 microfarad 0805 6.3 volt, this could become our user friendly name for this component and then Altium can also use this to find additional supply chain data. Once we've selected a few different suppliers that we may want to use as alternative parts, we can hit OK here, and then those alternative part choices will be added into the part choice list. To release this component, we come up to the upper left, click the Release button, and a few interesting things happen. One of the things is that it prompts us for some release notes, but before it even gets to the Release Notes dialog, it will actually run some component validation checks. Some of the things it looks for are mismatches between the component and the footprint. So for example, mismatch pin numbers and names, as well as things like shorted copper. So let me add in some notes here. And then we'll go ahead and release this component. Now that the component has been released, we'll be able to go to the components panel and even as the same search criteria that we put in before we created the component is still loaded, that criteria filtered down to the component that we just created. And if we were to clear that and type in something simple as 22 microfarads, we should still be able to find that component very easily and place it into our design. All right, so we'll look at this component in the bomb in just a second. So to easily identify it, I'm going to go ahead and rename this C999. And let's switch our focus to the bomb. So in the bill of materials, this is C99. Notice that it has the supply chain data below that we were looking for. And as we look at the supply chain data for these particular components, we may want to look at things like pricing, or if you have brand preference, in order to rank those particular part numbers. So in this case, the Kemet is a little bit cheaper, so let's go ahead and rank it with five stars, and then the Kyocera will go ahead and rank it with four stars. Now when we look at the supply chain solutions, we have ranked components, which can then be used to determine the manufacturer's part number 
and the supplier part number that will ultimately make it into the bill of materials. In the bill of materials, there may be a number of columns that you want to have present. When using Conquer Pro, you want to go ahead and add columns that have to do with Conquer Pro server information. So if you look at the ones that have the little hexagon icon, those are the parametric data that are coming from Conquer Pro. So in our case, we want to go ahead and make sure that we have the revision state and revision status both loaded into our bill of materials so that we can keep track of the revision state of each of the components as well as whether they're up to date or not. If you remember, L1 in the design was out of date and we need to update it and I wanted to show you here in the bill of materials. So if we find L1, we can see here that it is out of date and to update it, just as we did in the schematic, it's as simple as right clicking on it, hitting operations, and then hitting update to the latest revision. Within Conquer Pro, however, you can just sort on the revision status, find all of the out of date items at once, select them, and then update them all at the same time. Now we'll refresh them to get the, there we go. So now everything is up to date and we're ready to continue creating our bill of materials. Now that we've had a look at how Conquer Pro behaves in Altium Designer, let's have a quick summary to recap what we've learned. With all the design information in a central space, you can spend less time trying to communicate about what the meaning of each component is and more time designing. And now all the ECAD data is organized into a system that allows each of the users to interface with that data in the way that makes the most sense for them. Overall, our goal with Concord Pro has been to make it as simple as possible to utilize the components in your design. And to recap how Concord Pro can be used to help organize your components, let's review some of the main features. Concord Pro provides you with a component editor that's easy to use fully comprehensive and allows you to see the entire component composition. Conquer Pro uses templates to standardize the parameter sets and the component types that are created. It provides you your component status from within Conquer Pro as well as manufacturer lifecycle status from the supply chain. Component validation and verification both at the time that you release the component into Conquer Pro as well as at the active bomb level when you're working in the design. Each component is allowed to have multiple manufacturer part numbers attached to it, allowing you a great variety of alternate components that you can use at the time of purchase. And finally, we support bidirectional mechanical CAD data interchange between Altium Designer and your MCAD domain. So what are the next steps? Go to www.altium.com, start an evaluation of Altium Designer 20, or an evaluation of Concord Pro. Also, check out our upcoming webinars at www.altium.com slash webinars. Thank you for your time and attention. If you have any further questions, please reach out to us at www.altium.com.